What's up everyone? Welcome back to the AWS Cloud Demos. My name is Murli and in today's video we will talk about SQS queue. So what is SQS queue? SQS queue is a fully managed uh, messaging queue uh, for microservices, for distributed applications, uh, for serverless applications. There's, there are endless possibilities with the SQS queues. So we will uh, particularly do a demo of um, creating a SQS queue and we will uh, send a message to our Lambda. So Lambda will uh, trigger based on the S message uh, from the SQS queue and the Lambda will receive your message and it will try and store that in S3 bucket. So it's a it's a uh, serverless solution um, where we are using uh, SQS queue and a Lambda function. All right, um, so what uh, is AWS SQS uh, basically mean? So SQS is a reliable and easy to manage scalable queuing service. Um, so SQS is a simple and cost effective cloud application. So AWS SQS can be used to transmit any amounts of data um, at any level of throughput without losing messages. So it doesn't interrupt the other services uh, to run continuously. So SQS helps to reduce the administrative task by scaling highly available messaging clusters. So while we pay only for what we use, AWS SQS helps us to save important data, which is which might be lost um, in case uh, the entire application goes down or if any uh, component becomes unavailable. So basically, SQS queue acts as a buffer between the application components that receive the data and other other parts that process the data in the system. So SQS are used for message oriented architecture based on the application. So sometimes processing server cannot process the work fast enough due to the only possible reason the work is queued so that uh, the processing servers can work on it. So when they have available resources, uh, process the request. So this means that work is not lost due to insufficient resources. So, but those messages will be processed at some point later. So that is the whole point of having this SQS uh, to communicate effectively between various applications between, uh, it could be serverless, distributed, or any type of applications. Um, the purpose of SQS queue is simple. When your server don't have the capacity, you put messages in the queue. So um, at a later point, you get the messages and then you reprocess it, pull for messages and then reprocess it. That's simple it is. So on a high level, that is SQS queue. Um, so, I've created a architecture diagram here. So what we'll do now is we'll create a SQS queue, we'll create a S3 bucket, we'll create a Lambda function. We have all the code here in AWS snippets. So if you haven't uh, checked out my GitHub yet, please do follow uh, my uh, GitHub. Please do follow my LinkedIn uh, profile so that I will be making this content uh, available publicly. Um, so coming, going back to the architecture diagram, so you can see the Lambda function, I am role messages. Uh, S3 bucket. So we will start by creating a uh, S3 bucket and um, we will also create an IAM role for our Lambda so that our Lambda will be uh, uh, receiving messages from the SQS queue, right? So we need permissions, okay? Uh, so once SQS is there and um, what we will do is we'll simply send the messages so that our Lambda will trigger and the Lambda is going to store our uh, messages into S3 bucket. So for that, we also need permissions from S3 bucket to store the messages into our bucket. All right, uh, so that's simple it is. So all the core examples are in this SQS directory in the AWS snippets. So if you haven't, please go to this application. So I'm gonna link this uh, application in the description box below. So you just need to click on the link and copy paste uh, the IAM role and also the Lambda function and Lambda function that you wanted to uh, create this application. Okay, um, so I've already logged into my console. So make sure you log into a console and open up S3 bucket. So before we head into the demo, please do not forget to subscribe. Please do not forget to like, uh, please share this video and also uh, make sure you follow my LinkedIn and also my GitHub, okay? So let's go to the uh, dashboard, okay? And we will try and do open S3 bucket. So if you, ha if you don't know how to open it, so you can cl simply click on the search and type S3. So you're gonna get this from the services, okay? So in my case, I have, uh, bookmarks so that bookmarks is easy for me to click and uh, landed on my s3 bucket so, so this is my s3 so what i'm going to do is um, create a bucket over here so name your bucket which is in my case sqs q lambda trigger okay um and then Make sure you are on US East one because all my examples are from US East one and also you can see US East one and you can see 
I also given uh, my uh, roles specific to those services, although this doesn't relate to any service uh, here, but uh, you can see uh, my Lambda SQS is pointing to US uh, East one. Okay, so make sure, you, I mean, you can choose your own region, but in my case, it's US East one. So make sure to edit that. All right, so go to my S3 bucket. So SQS Q Lambda trigger. So this is my bucket and this is my region where I'm going to create my bucket and this is my ACL disabled. So I want to disable it, block all public access, no, uh so hang on um so scroll down a bit and the block uh, uncheck the block all access public access and select i acknowledge and the current settings might result in the bucket uh objects within a uh, big be becoming public that's totally fine don't worry about that right now just go ahead and create the bucket okay so we have successfully created our bucket which is sqsq lambda trigger so this is a bucket where we're gonna store our messages from sqsq from our lambda function okay so as soon as you create your uh, bucket, so what you're going to do is you are going to go to IAM like so. So go to IAM. So we're going to create a role and also a policy which will allow us to talk to S3 and also we will also get the messages from our SQSQ. So what we're going to do, go to go to the roles and create a role like so. And now I'm going to choose Lambda here, AWS service, Lambda and click on next. So here, um, so I want to give some custom um, policies. So what I'm going to do is click on this create policy link here. So go to that create policy. Okay, so you can choose the services that you want, like for example, S3 or maybe SQSQ, it's totally up to you. But now what I'm going to do a simple thing is go to click on JSON, uh, which is easy for me to create and go ahead and copy the policy over here and simply paste it, okay? So this is pretty straightforward. So I'll tell you what it is doing. It's basically we are accessing, giving access to our uh, CloudWatch logs. We are actually uh, also allowing access to our S3 bucket, which is put object and get object. So this should be good and go ahead and cl click on next. And uh, you can see, so we are giving full access S3. We are giving SQS full access. We are giving access to CloudWatch logs. We are also giving S3 object Lambda. So these are the uh, permissions that we are going to give and choose your policy name in my case it's uh, my sqs lambda trigger policy copy the name and it's totally up to you if you want to give description in my case i'm just going to ignore it and go ahead and click on create policy so that creates my policy over here and go back to the previous tab where you have uh, where you can choose your policy and click refresh you should be able to see our policy. So that's our policy. Select that and click on next. So now I'm going to do my SQS Lambda trigger role. So this is our role, uh, which allows our Lambda functions to call AWS services on your behalf. And that's our trusted entity. Um, and then scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on create role like so. So now that you have created a role um, and uh, which is pretty much done, uh, so you don't need to do anything else. So what you're going to do is go to Lambda function. Let's create a Lambda function. OK, go to Lambda. And now uh, click on create function. So let's name this function my Lambda SQS. Okay, it's totally up to you. Name is totally up to you. I'm going to choose Python 3.9 and I'm going to choose the to change default execution role. I'm going to use existing role, which is in my case, my SQS Lambda trigger role. Okay, simply select that um, and go ahead and create function. So, all right. So now that we have created the function, okay. So I'm going to simply uh, scroll down a bit. Um, copy the lambda function over here, right? It's a simple lambda function. I'll explain you what it is doing. So simply remove that and paste this. So basically what this lambda function is doing is, so we are trying to get the records, uh, the SQS message. So basically by using event object here and getting the records from it, uh, from our SQS queue. Um, so as soon as you get the SQS uh, message, you're gonna print it to your um, console. So I'm gonna show you. And then this is my bucket. So what is the bucket name that we have given in our case? 
in our case, our bucket name is go back to our S3 bucket. Um, see SQSQ Lambda trigger. So copy that name and go back to your Lambda function. Simply update uh, your bucket name. Don't forget to update your bucket name. And um, this is my region. That's totally fine. And this is the file that I'm going to create, which is called SQS message dot json so this contains our sqs message so i'm going to show you how it looks and after you do s3 client dot put object s3 client is again from our boto3 client which is our python framework uh, python um, third-party library which will allow us to uh, use aws resources like s3 client you can see s3 client uh, will actually put this object which is sqs message queue into our s3 bucket Okay, so once it is done, if this line executes successfully, what we're going to do is simply print S3 upload uh, successful. So that means if you see this message, that means your um, SQS message JSON is created and uploaded to the S3 bucket. So and then we will return uh, S3 upload success. If there is an er any error uh, in the process, so we simply throw an error, uh, which is of uh, five, 500 error status. Okay, um, it is very simple. Click on deploy. So now that we have deployed our Lambda function, so what we're going to do now is we will be adding our trigger. Uh, so click on add trigger. And here choose SQS. And here there is no SQS queue yet because we need to create a SQS queue. OK, so let's go back to our uh, this tab and open up SQS. Let's go ahead and create a standard queue. OK, so now you are in the SQS screen. Click on create queue. Uh, standard queue and this is my SQS queue all right so you don't need to change anything leave the default visibility timeout to 30 seconds message retention to four days leave all these default options and server-side encryption enabled so you don't need to do anything else leave the dead letter queue disabled so let's just scroll that above a bit and okay that looks good and click on create queue all right so now you have created your SQS queue. So we will start sending and receive messages uh, once we um, add the trigger to our Lambda. Okay, so go back to the other tab. So we, we were trying to attach our SQS queue. Now click refresh so that uh, your queue will appear right here. So select the My SQS queue and you can see the ARN, which is uh, your identifier for your SQS queue. And make sure you activate the trigger and go ahead and click on add. Okay, so now that we have added our SQS trigger to our Lambda function, which is great. And now, um, because we have our SQS queue, which is having a status still creating, so just refresh a couple of times and you should see the queue should be enabled before you um, start sending and receiving messages. Okay, so simply click refresh a couple of times. Um, you can see now the status is enabled and uh, uh, you can see all the settings that we have used. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, so. Now your Lambda function is ready um, and also your SQS queue is ready. So go back to the other tab where we, we have created our SQS queue. So now click on send and message receive messages. Uh, now enter a JSON object because remember we have created a file which is of type. Let's go to code and scroll up down a bit. So you can see we have created SQS queue dot message dot JSON file. So we are trying to create a JSON file. Right, so for that, what we're going to do is message body. So I'm going to create a JSON here, which is, uh, for example, name. Um, it's acting weird. Uh, only. And then let's remove this brace here, and which looks good. So this is my basic JSON, uh, which will be stored in my SQS message JSON file. OK, so now as soon as you hit send message, Okay, now the message has been sent. So our Lambda should be triggered. Okay, so how do I check my Lambda, whether my Lambda is triggered or not? So go to CloudWatch logs, because you remember we have attached the CloudWatch permission as well. So now go to CloudWatch, click on log groups. In here, you should be able to see your Lambda function over here. So this is our Lambda function, remember? So click on that and click on this uh, log. So you can see all these messages, right? So this is my message, that SQS message, and you can see the S3 upload successful, and um, uh, you can also see all the IDs and all that stuff. 
which is basically what it is saying is uh, S3 upload was successful. Okay, so um, if you go back to S3 now, you should see a file uh, which is SQS message dot JSON. Um, so go to your S3 bucket, SQS Q Lambda trigger. This is our bucket name, right? So click on the SQS message dot JSON. So you can see this file is created, right? So which is which means uh, it has uploaded the file. So now click on download and open up this file. And there you go. So you can see that uh, my file is downloaded with the mess with the message that we have sent and uh, triggered the Lambda function, right? So yeah, that simple it is. Um, you can see uh, it's pretty simple uh, to create our SQS uh, trigger uh, to the Lambda function. Okay, so one more thing. Let me go back to Lambda again. Um, click on that and click on my Lambda SQS. So you can see this trigger is actually calling the uh, Lambda function, right? So as soon as when whenever there is a message, the message will be updated in the Lambda function because we are not uh, appending the message. We are just simply saving whatever the message we get. So if you if you click on send and receive message again, so you're going to see, for example, now I'm do uh, I'm going to do PR. OK, let's say it's simply a P. OK, now click on send message. So you have sent another message. That means your your S3 bucket should now have the latest message, right? So S3, go to S3, click on the bucket that you have just created and click on the SQS message. And now you can also open up in a new tab, copy the S3 and, um, oh, sorry, one more second. And now click on this open link uh, that has downloaded. This is our second file. So there you go, our name is now updated. So we have our latest message in our SQS JSON file, right? So that simple it is, it is pretty simple uh, to create this SQS message trigger to Lambda function. Uh, so this will be very helpful when you're dealing with a multiple or a large uh, bunch of microservices or distributed applications or or um, anything, you know, um, you want to break anything, any monolithic application into a pieces where all these pieces can communicate together with these SQS messages. We will discuss about the, all the latest, uh, all more concepts on SQS like dead letter queue. We will talk about FIFA, FIFA um, first in first out queue. So we will talk about that in a later video. But uh, for this video, I think um, we are pretty much done. So. All that you have to do now is delete these resources because it's simply going to your S3 bucket and click on the bucket. First empty your bucket and then delete your bucket and also delete your Lambda function and also delete your SQS queue. Okay, so that that's it guys. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please do uh, share my videos and also please don't forget to uh, follow me on GitHub and LinkedIn, guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next video.